Welcome everyone to another tutorial for the Wonderland collection. This time I'm going to show you how to make the Vivian dress with sleeves and 60s style cuffs. The dress has got a concealed zip at the back and a beautiful collar. It's really for any occasion but I think it's a very smart dress for going out. If you want to style it a bit more childlike you can put tabs on and contrast panels and totally groovy modeling here by Magdalena for this awesome dress. So let's have a look at it in detail. We've got the Peter Pan collar, we've got a gathered petticoat and everything is really overlocked so it's quite easy to do. With the side panels I would recommend a really firm jersey if you're using jersey like myself here and those beautiful tabs can run from the back but you could also have them running from the front. At the back we've got a concealed zip, the whole thing is totally lined and we have only got one piece for the front and two pieces for the back for the lining. That makes it a lot easier to put in. So let's get started. Let's begin by doing something easy. Let's make the tabs. Put the fabric on top of each other with the right sides facing and then we're going to sew all the way around. Lift the presser foot as you turn and that should give you a really nice and even shape. Cut back your seam allowance, turn your tab and then you can either iron it or you can just put it straight back under and top stitch around the edge making sure that you get all the edges out. Press your tabs and they're prepared to go onto the dress. Next we're going to put the panels in. So put the side panels, in my case I'm using a jersey for it. It makes it a little bit more comfortable, although my jersey was a bit too stretchy for this. Put the side panels in and do the same on the back. Now the tab here has got this slant, so make sure you put the right one on and that you leave at least one and a half centimeters from the lower end so that you can put the skirt on without catching your tab. Then pin the panel over the top all the way and there we go, we're ready to sew this. So the panels are sewn in with a one centimeter seam allowance. Make sure that the fabric is edge to edge and only take your pins out as you actually go there. You can see here how my fingers hold back the jersey fabric so that you can get it in where it needs to go. Then you also do the shoulder seams. And the shoulder seams on the lining too. And then you can press the whole lot. The printer seams are always pressed towards the body center. And in this case, we're going to press the seams towards the back. Press the seams apart on the lining as well. And then we're going to do a whole lot of overlocking. First of all, all the princess seams, front and back. Then on the lining, the center back and the side seams. On the sleeve, both sides of course. Then on the skirt, the center back and the side seams. And we repeat the same on the lining, center back and side seams. Now if you want to, you can top stitch the princess seams, but obviously I just run out of footage space on my camera, so you carry on doing that and then give that a press. And we swiftly move on to the collar. You need some violin, that's iron-on interfacing, which goes on the upper collar. So you iron that on first. And we're going to stitch all the way around. We're leaving the neckline open.
lift the presser foot, do a few stitches, lift the presser foot again, then move a little bit further. The more experience you have, the easier it becomes and you can actually go around without doing that. But when you're beginning or you have only little experience in sewing, you should really do it like that. Then make sure your needle is down as you turn to go back up on the collar. Secure your stitches, cut back the seam allowance and then we can turn the collar, move out all the edges really well and press the collar. Now I've done both my collars, they're ready to go on the dress later. But before I do that, I can top stitch them. You don't have to top stitch, but if you do, make sure your stitch length is about 3.5 or 3. Don't make it too small because then you find that it looks really homemade. So a long stitch is really important. All the way around. Then you pin it from the center front to the back and you can see there's about one and a half to two centimeters left standing at the end. You want to put a holding stitch in close to the edge, not a centimeter, just on the edge. And now we're going to put the lining over the top and that is being secured around the neckline. So what you want to do is put a marker pin in here because we're only sewing and we're leaving those three centimeters at the end open. So pin it neatly all the way around. I'm still pinning. <laughs> Put another marker pin it. And now we're sewing all the way around. Make sure that everything is nice and flat. None of your seam allowances fold over one centimeter as always all the way around don't forget we're stopping early and we're starting late now I need to snip all the curves just to make sure that when I turn it we have no tension you can also snip back the whole seam if you like to make it a little bit slimmer then we're going to turn it And we're going to understitch to ensure that our lining can't roll out. We're literally stitching the lining onto the seam allowance with a stitch length of 2.5, about 2 millimeters from the seam. But make sure you don't sew all the way to the end of your stitch line because then you wouldn't be able to get into it later when we put the zip in. So make sure you stop there. Now we're going to join our side seams of the shell fabric. And that's also going to be sewn together with a seam allowance of one centimeter. So it looks like this. And then we press the seam. Now also sew together the seam allowance of the lining. And that again is one centimeter. And I think it's time for a quick break. Let's have a cup of coffee before we come back. I'm back. <laughs> now we're going to put the skirt together. So the hem trim needs to be joined. You have two very long bits there and we just join them with a one centimeter seam allowance. Just make sure that you don't see any of the selvage. Iron the seam apart. And then we're also going to iron this lengthways in half. And now I can put my pleats in. You could gather this, but I like just pleats because pleats are a little bit flatter and actually it's quite quick to do. And now we're also putting together the side seams of the lining and the center back. Make sure you leave the center back open to the point that we're going to put the zip in. And then we can put on our little ruffle for the hem. We're not starting at the very beginning though right sides together we're going to start a little bit off the edge because we don't know how much we're going to need of this stuff and what we don't need we're just going to cut off so right sides together 
just sew along one centimeter seam allowance around the edge. When you think, ooh, I might not have enough because I've just put too many pleats in, just let out one pleat, that's absolutely fine. And if you have too much, just cut it off at the end. So when you get almost to the end, mine actually was exactly enough, that was quite good. Check where the fabric needs to go to, and then just put a pin there, and then whoosh, just sew this too, and then we can cut that back and overlock it, and sew across a little bit at the end that we've left open. It's very simple. Here you can see I've overlocked it, and now I can press the whole thing, and I also want to stitch over the top, just to make it look a little bit more professional, and that again requires a longer stitch length, so 3.5 or 3, all the way around. Could put a ribbon on there as well, which will be really pretty. Now we're going to put together our actual skirt, so don't forget that the centre back we need to leave a gap. As you can see here, I'm not starting at the top, I'm starting where I'm going to put my zip in and then I also close the side seams and I press the seams apart. Next we're going to put in the gather threads. The first one is going to be put in not directly on the edge, you know, slightly next to it and then foot width apart from that again. The next prep step is to overlock the lower edge so that we can do the hem later. It's just easier to do it now. And now we can attach that skirt to the top. So you have to find the center of the skirt and the center front of the bodice. And then with the right sides facing, you put that on top of each other and gather from either side until you have the right amount of gather so that you can go all the way to the end. So place your seam allowances on top of each other, give that a little tuck and when you have got the right amount you can distribute them. Make sure that you leave one and a half centimeters at the center back because we're going to put the zip in there. And then we go on to pinning our lining as well. So same thing really. But then unlike what we've done on the skirt, we're not going to gather it, we're just going to pleat it. Pleating is a lot um, flatter and therefore the dress will sit nicer, it won't be so bulky because the lining isn't attached. The whole thing will seem a little bit bigger than it would if it was all in one. So all these pleats need to face the body middle. So in this case we're going towards the back and in the front both sides need to go towards each other meeting in the middle. And then I'm going to sew it on and I'm sewing directly in the middle of my gather threads which should be that one centimeter and if you worked really well it should look something like this. Now we're also going to sew the lining on. Make sure nothing falls over, that's why I have vertical pins in here, not the ones that go along because it makes very good sense like this. I've overlocked my waist line and the waistline on the actual dress. And now it's time to put in my zip. I have actually got a zip video for this in the sewing workshop which is about 20 minutes long, as long as this whole video, so if you're not sure I would recommend that you watch that. So with the teeth facing up, you're going to put one side in but you're only going to put it in on the edge and only to the opening here and then you swivel the whole thing around and you pin it to the other side. The important part here is to line up very flat at the lower end and then again line up your waistlines of the lining and the shell fabric. As you can see here I've checked it, make sure that the checks are opposite each other and when they are you can open up your zip all the way to the end and you can see here why I prefer a very long zip because it's much easier to work with. Put it under the machine, move over your needle as far as you can and then it just attaches it to the side. And anyone that's put in a concealed zip before will know that when you have a proper concealed zipper foot 
or you use the zipper foot I'm using here, it will push the zip over and you sometimes end with a very uneven zip. So this is why we sew it in first. Make sure that you sew in from the opening to the top first, then come back down from the top to the opening. That is much, much easier because of course you've got a lot of zip here to fight with. The other way around it is not as easy. Go right to the opening and then we can just do the zip up. It's actually quite simple but it does take a bit of practice. Next we're going to attach the lining. So the lining here is folded back and then folded back again and don't you just love it when everything else is in focus and what you're showing in the front isn't so <laughs> But you can watch the workshop video if that was not quite clear enough. And then you just sew across the top and there your zip is already in. If they don't quite line up from both sides, then you just go in again. You don't need to unpick anything and just sew it a bit lower. I'm now going to pin my lining to the zip all the way around. And then we're going to slip stitch it on and I prefer this method really to doing it by machine. Of course you can, in this case you could because it's still open uh, at the hem, but I prefer it like this. You're kind of tunneling through with your slip stitch through that crease and then pick up a little bit of your zip and that's it basically. Now we want to attach the armholes together just to make sure that they don't go anywhere and I would recommend that you sew around it. I don't tend to do that but I also always prick myself with the pins and that's not too pleasant either. So once you've done that you take your sleeve and where you've got the snip that is actually where we're going to attach the cuff. There's my snip. It's towards the back. So sew together your sleeve first, one centimeter seam allowance, iron the seam apart and then you sew down either side of the cuff, press the cuff and then we can turn the sleeve and we just put our cuff on. Make sure that we have got the right sides facing each other if you kind of have one. That's only if you have a pattern that needs to run downwards. So make sure that if you have a pattern you put it on right else it doesn't really matter. And then rough sides at the top obviously we're stitching this in. Always stitch from the inside. That makes it so much easier because you can pull the fabric over like I do here and that makes life very easy. Secure your stitch and then we're going to overlock this as well. So make sure that you remove all your pins because that's, you know, death by pin for any overlocker. I usually just grab it and if I prick myself, I know that I still need to remove a pin. So now we need to just find the right sleeve to go in the right armhole and we've got a snip in the front of each sleeve and that is clearly my left arm. So I'm going through the left armhole and then I am attaching the sleeve seam and the underarm seam and I'm putting those on top of each other and either side of those I'm bringing in my sleeve fairly flat and when I get to the sleeve head here and I've pinned that one in I will actually have some extra that I need to hold in and that's what I need to do either side of my sleeve head. That holding in is very important otherwise you have a very tight sleeve. Roll it over, check it from the outside and then you're ready to sew your sleeve in. While I'm here I'm also sewing on my cover buttons um, I didn't in the end like the ones I'd chosen earlier so um, I've just thought nah I'm just going to cover these and I stitched all the way through so that they were secure. I also want to do my hem 
pin it now, so I only have to walk over to the sewing machine once. And that's quite um, important, really, to cut down all your movement from one machine to the other. And then I'm going to sew in my sleeve like this and move it around. And if you find it really hard to get in, take a pin and hold your fabric in place with a pin and then kind of push it under the foot. And then all you need to do is overlock all the way around here as well. So that's nice and clean and your dress is finished. I hope you enjoyed this and just a reminder of how pretty it can look if you choose a nice fabric so beautifully modeled here by Tina. The Wonderland collection has many more items you might want to see. Here she is again wearing the Wonderland coat which you can make with a hoodie or collar and the Wonderland blouse which has got a cummerbund and it's just absolutely cute. You can make it with jersey sleeves or woven sleeves. Options are endless. Hope you enjoyed this tutorial and I'll see you next time. Bye for now.